Hi everyone, I'm Jessisa and welcome to Christmas Folklore. I started this series last year and you guys voted in the poll on my community page that we should continue it this year. So, here we are. Today I will tell you about Tomta, elves, gnomes or hobgoblins. They have many names and different stories depending on where you are from. I remember as a child I read a story about Grotomtar, grey gnomes, and it was so creepy and intriguing that I actually wanted to stay overnight at a barn just in case I could see one. But anyways, let's start talking about the Nordic mythology of Tomtar. There are actually many kinds of tomta in folklore. There's Santa Claus. We call him Jultomten in Swedish. I did talk about Santa Claus last year uh, and there will be a link up in the corner and at the end of this video if you want to know more. I will not talk too much about Santa Claus in this video, but I do want to mention him and give you guys a little bit of a recap from last year's video. He is inspired by Uda from Norse mythology. He acquired the all-seeing eye, and with the help of his two ravens, Hugin and Munin, he always knew everything about everything and everyone. Every winter solstice, he rides his nine-legged horse, Sleipnir, across the sky and delivers presents to the people. Bill Tomten came to Sweden in the later half of the 1800s, as a character from mostly Germany, but he was based on the actual Saint Nikolaus. One tale in Swedish folklore is of a shadow farmer who had supernatural powers that made sure that the farm had good fortune. He didn't show himself often, but he was described as being shorter than a normal human, grumpy with a long beard and gray clothing. It was believed that he was the first one to cultivate the farm and didn't get any rest after death. He always needed to make sure the farm was doing good. You had to be on good terms with him and not upset him in any way. He had a bad temper and would often take revenge on the farm owners if they mistreated the land or animals. He mostly kept watch over the animals in the barn. As a thank you, the farm owners often left him some porridge. He especially liked rice pudding, which in tradition later would be called tomtegrat, Santa porridge. Something we often eat during Christmas, in Sweden at least. I remember reading about Grotomta as a child, and I remember that they were very mischievous, and they would often prank the farm owners and sleep in the barn. I can, I can still like see the picture from the book in my head. Uh, I remember there's a barn and little gray gnomes running around, hiding and laughing from the farm owners. I think you could also see like the farmer in the picture. Yeah, memories. <laughs> Tomta belongs to the Uknit, which is an umbrella term for all things supernatural in Scandinavian folklore. Things like Skogsrået, Necken and Toll belongs to this term as well. Tomta is often compared to Vetta, hobgoblins. They are small, mischievous creatures that are often easily annoyed and petty. The complete opposite of Santa Claus. There are different types of Vetta and Tomta. One is God's Tomte, or God's Vette. Like the Grå Tomte, these are sneaky and loves to prank humans. In Icelandic folklore, they have Landvettar, and if you scare them away, all the luck will disappear from the entire neighborhood. Another name for Tomta is Nissar, elves, or something of the sort. These have been modernized in the same way that Santa has. They've become icons for Christmas and are even called Santa's little helpers. That was all I had on Tomta. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like and comment down below to let me know. 
Next time, I will talk about how we celebrated Yule before Christmas became the main holiday in Sweden. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other and yourself, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!